Notice from the Foundation Bucket and Information Security Administration. The following file is a digitized copy of an American Secure Containment Initiative file that has been preserved for posterity. Please consult your local HCML supervisor before acting on any information in this file. Maria Jones, Director, LASA. Item number 6789AH. Object class, humanoid ontokinetic, possibly. Threat level, green, update, no threat currently. ASCI protocols for containment. A bounty of 10,000 francs had been placed on 6789AH's head with an additional 100 francs for each of his crew members. As political complications resulting from Emperor Napoleon's military campaigns have prevented the state noir from supporting the ASCI business in the state of France, concerning 6789AH should be conducted through intermediaries. Description Item 6789AH is a French Captain Francois Arrig Nidu, Captain of the Docte d'Angers. The item is believed to be a preternatural being of some renown, though a full description of its abilities is unconfirmed. What has been observed is that 6789AH is able to physically control the paths of other ships within eyesight, manipulating her sails and rigging's any way it pleases. 6789AH has used this ability to run vessels and to cruise aground or dash them against box and collect whatever of value remained. As a result of these abilities, 6789AH was able to become a highly successful privateer in service to France, capturing over 30 military and merchant ships in under 10 years. A behind of the item while at sea is highly inadvisable. Officers should wait until Item 6789AH has disembarked and sink to Ignijik as soon as possible to cut off a means of escape. 14th of December, 1812. In December of 1812, a report was published in a local French newspaper of a naval ship's encounter with the Duc Ignijik due to the Second War of Independence. A full examination and review of the event was not possible. He had spotted a vessel floating at sea late last night, loading in the waves with seemingly no direction. The decision was made to contact the crew. If they were good and courteous Frenchmen, we would assist them in whatever distress they found themselves in. If they were vagrants, we would assist their distress. As we drew closer, we were perplexed at the silence of which the ship stood. There were no signs of a recent skirmish or the impact of a storm. It was in perfect condition. A boarding party came up beside it and I was first among them. We found an ungodly amount of blood staining the deck. It appeared that the whole crew, at least 50 men strong, had been slaughtered. Men were hanging off the ropes like criminals, others laid on the ground with their entrails thrown astride, and many had simply had their faces caved in with cannonballs fired from their own cannons. One man, dressed in finery of a captain, and with the putrid stench of a corpse, had been leashed to the main mast, swords piercing his hands and feet like a ghast a crucifixion. Bloody papers in the hold identified the ship as a Duke Eight a privateering ship of almost um, more fame. It had gone missing some time ago and we serviced here. What had happened? Had the crew gone mad overthrowing the captain? But why would they destroy themselves in such a manner? Francois made the decision to burn the ship, one I agreed heartily with. Whatever evil occurred there, it was best to leave it. Based on the details we've seen above, 
It is the opinion of ASCI command that the mutiny occurred against item 6789AH in which it was slain, but not before it used its anomalous abilities to enact the deaths of its crew. The possibility of other members of the Duke Ikonji having had similar powers has not been ruled out. With the death of item 6789AH, the mission has been closed. You have one additional file to view. Open file. Item number SCP-5987 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures A 3 km radius around SCP-5987's manifestation area has been blocked off from all sea and air traffic. Foundation vehicles should not go within 2 km of SCP-5987. Description SCP-5987 is a Type 4H apparition. Note referring to apparitions of usually inanimate objects, centralized to a small area in a Curricon Bay off the southwest coast of France. Between the time of nautical twilight on the evening of one day and nautical twilight on the following day, a 19th century brig will appear, sailing around the bay before vanishing. SCP-5987 has been observed to always stay within a kilometer of its manifestation point. All vehicles that approach SCP-5987, hereby referred to as SCP-5987-1 instances, will be unable to be controlled by their operators. Wheels, pedals, and other methods of directional movement will still function, but will not produce their desired results. SCP-5987-1 instances will then immediately dive underwater, typically killing all passengers on board. An annual analysis of predecessor files in 2017 revealed that the ASCI had documented an anomaly similar to SCP-5987 centered around a vessel 200 years earlier that was believed to be neutralized when item 6789AH, the captain Francois Ignodou, was killed at sea as part of a suspected mutiny. Due to an increasing risk of sightings by civilians, current containment efforts are being redirected towards neutralization of SCP-5987. A mission was approved to search the manifestation area for any signs of spectral significance. Video log. Date, January 7th, 2019. Vessel, SCP-S Submissible Nethys. Begin log, 2300, SCP S. Nephith approaches the radius of SCP 5987's area of effect. 2305, SCP 5987 turns towards the submarine. Command loses connection with Nephith as it submerges. 2305 to 2316, Command attempts to re establish contact with the submersible. 2316, Communication is re-established. Captain Dumas supports that the submersible experienced every but non-essential damage from colliding with the ocean floor. However, a numerous influence on Nephthys has ceased. Dumas requests an update on his current objective. 2316-2334 Deliberations were held between the members of the research team. Some wish to take the opportunity to investigate SCP-5987 more closely, while others insist on relying on the original mission parameters. 2334, deliberation ceases when SCP-5987 is observed retreating to the further distance. A white flag is raised from its main mast. 2337, Taking it as a sign of approval, Nephthys is cleared to proceed its original parameters. 2345, Nephthys reaches the approximate manifestation point. Numerous wooden and steel shipwrecks can be seen dotting the sea floor. Nephthys switches to search mode. Extraneous logs redacted. 218, Nephthys passes by a small wooden shipwreck, rendering the diving team. At sea level, 
SCP-3987 lowered its flag to half-mast before raising it to full again. Note, in maritime custom, a dipping of the flag indicates a sign of respect or acknowledgement. This information was relayed to Duma, and the divers were deployed to clear access to the wreckage. 225 several skeletons are found, with all with various levels of saltwater corrosion. Note, especially significant remains do not decay or corrode. They were deemed non-anomalous. 2.30. Agent Lacroix finds a large ornate figurehead carved to resemble a siren or mermaid. Buried underneath a large section of the hull, notably the figurehead lacks any damage. 2.35. A loud bell chime is heard as divers depart. SCP-5987 vanishes prematurely. The mission is declared over, and Nevertheless returns to the surface. End log. At Nautical Twilight the next day, SCP-15987 did not appear and was considered neutralized. The figurehead has been designated as SCP-15987-1, pending further examination. You have one pending revision. Refresh file. Item number SCP-15987 Security Level 1 Containment Class Euclid Disruption Class Dark Risk Class Notice Special Containment Procedures SCP-1587 has been treated for saltwater production and fitted to a historically accurate miniature 19th century sailing ship which has been placed in the saltwater enclosure at Area 34th Marine Observatory. SCP-15987 should be examined once a month for any signs of damage. Description SCP-1587 is the former figurehead of the Doc de Gnogic, a French privateer brig. Note, a two-masted sailing vessel common during the 18th and early 19th centuries. From the early 19th century. However, analysis of the composition has revealed that SCP-5987 was made approximately 200 years prior and was most likely added after construction of the brig. SCP-5987 is able to control all seafaring vessels within a kilometer of its facility. In the past, its ability was used to sink rival ships or run them aground for looting. It appeared to be sent to this task, however, and ended up killing its captain, François de Nordou, and his crew in 1811, after it was burned at sea by a French naval ship. The manner of its death was strong enough to create a spectral disturbance tied to its location. Currently, SCP-1587 uses its ability to sail around its enclosure. Personnel in close vicinity report hearing an unknown chorus of voices singing the French sea shanty Boney was a warrior.